Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K and today we discuss about the anatomy of eyeball part 1 where we will be taking out the topics the sclera and the cornea. So the eyeball is the organ of vision which is placed within the orbit of the skull. So all of you know about the orbit which is a socket which is present on the skull in which the eye is situated and the eyeball is spherical in shape with 2.5 cm diameter and it is composed of three concentric layers which are lying one after other so the outermost layer is the fibrous coat while the middle layer is the vascular coat which is composed of the vasculature and the nervous coat which is the innermost coat which is composed of the nerve fibers and each of these layers are further divided or uh, it can be like uh, divided into following parts. So the outer cord or the fibrous cord is composed of sclera and the cornea. And the middle cord or the vascular cord which is otherwise known as the uveal tract is composed of the choroid, ciliary body and the iris. While the inner cord or the nervous cord is composed of retina. So these are the further components of these each layers and we will be looking only into the outer cord that is a fibrous cord. So the outer fibrous cord is composed of two parts that is the sclera and the cornea. So that is very clear here we have a model where this white color area represents the sclera and this transparent part where this brown color is the iris. It is actually transparent and that is called as the cornea. So the transparent part of the outer fibrous cord is cornea while the opaque white part of the outer fibrous cord is termed as the sclera. So these are the two components. So let's discuss in detail about these two structures. So the sclera is opaque and the cornea is the transparent part and the junction between these two is termed as the sclerocorneal junction and here I have represented four muscles which are helpful in the movement of the eyeball so that we will be discussing later but here you can have a look into those muscles how they are attached to the eyeball. So the sclera it is an opaque part and it forms the posterior 5 sixth of the eyeball and it is mostly avascular. So the posterior 5 sixth of the eyeball is formed by the sclera which is white and opaque and it is composed of dense fibrous tissue. So the, com uh, the composition of the sclera is dense fibrous tissue which helps in the maintenance of the shape and it is thickest behind near the optic nerve while thinnest 6 mm behind the sclerocorneal junction where the recti muscles are inserted. So in the previous picture we have seen the rectus muscle. This one is the medial rectus muscle and here is the sclerocorneal junction. So 6 mm behind the sclerocorneal junction there is the thinnest part of the sclera which gives insertion for the rectus muscles. And there is another part called as the lamina cribrosa. So the cribrosa means perforated. So the perforations are seen on the posterior part of the sclera for the passage of nerve fibers arising from the optic nerve. So that area is called as lamina cribrosa. So these many points you have to remember regarding the sclera. Then let's discuss the structure of sclera. The sclera is composed of the dense connective tissue that is the dense fibrous connective tissue and the outer surface of sclera is white and smooth which is covered by a capsule called as the tenons capsule. So that is an added point where the outer surface is white and smooth which is covered by the tenons capsule while the inner surface is brown and grooved for ciliary nerves and vessels. So the ciliary vessels are richly supplying the choroid part of uh, the layers of eyeball. So the choroid layer comes in the middle cord that is the vascular cord. So those vessels and the nerves passing through there 
will be forming some grooves on the inner surface of the sclera and the sclera is separated from the choroid layer by lamina fuscia or lamina fusca okay so this layer separates the sclera from that of the choroid layer lying beneath it then the anterior part of sclera which is visible outside when we just see the eye of another person we can see the white part and the black part or the cornea which is the transparent part so that white scleral part is covered by a thin layer of conjunctiva so that is called as the conjunctival layer and this conjunctiva and the sclera is separated by a thin layer of connective tissue which is a loose connective tissue called as episclera so outside of the sclera between the conjunctiva and the sclera there is a loose connective tissue which is called as episclera it is having some clinical importance that we will discuss later so here you can see a representation of the inner surface of sclera where you can see the grooves which are there because of the vessels the ciliary vessels and nerves passing beneath, uh, beneath it so they will produce some grooves within the inner surface of sclera and uh, the tenens capsule you can visualize the white color area outside that is the outer surface it is covered by the tenens capsule and anteriorly the sclera is continuous with cornea at the sclerocorneal junction so we have seen the sclerocorneal junction in the previous uh, representations so that junction is otherwise known as the limbus so that is an important term to remember the limbus is otherwise known as the sclerocorneal junction that is where the sclera is separated from the cornea and the deep part of the limbus or the sclerocorneal junction contains a circular canal that is called as the canal of schlem the canal of phlegm and that canal has a particular importance because it drains the aqueous humor into the anterior scleral or the ciliary veins so a doubt will come what is aqueous humor so that we will be discussing while in the when we discuss about the chambers of the eyeball we will discuss what is aqueous humor it is nothing but a jelly like fluid which is present in the anterior chamber of eyeball so that liquid is drained into the anterior scleral or ciliary veins through the canal of phlegm so you have to remember this term and you should remember where it is present and the sclera is pierced by these structures so it is pierced by the optic nerve ciliary nerves and the arteries the anterior ciliary arteries and the vena verticosi so these are the structures which penetrate or pierces the sclera so that concludes the sclera and the second part is the cornea so the cornea is the transparent part of the outer fibrous coat which replaces sclera over the anterior one sixth of the eyeball so the posterior five sixth was sclera and the anterior one sixth of the eyeball is formed by the cornea which is transparent and it is more convex when compared to the sclera which is avascular and is nourished by the lymph which circulates in numerous corneal spaces and by the lacrimal fluid so the cornea is avascular in nature that is the reason why we can transplant the cornea to some other person because there is no vascular supply so it can be replaced or it can be grafted to some other person or some other individual without any problems so that is the peculiarity of cornea which is avascular but it is nourished by the lymph and the lacrimal fluid and it is separated from the iris by a space called as anterior chamber of the eye so previously i have told you about the aqueous humor and the two chambers of the eye so the anterior chamber lies between the cornea and the lens so that chamber is filled by a fluid called as aqueous humor which will be drained through the canal of schlem so 
that chamber separates the cornea from the iris and that is called as the anterior chamber of eye and here you can see the sclerocorneal junction so that is otherwise known as the limbus underlying that there will be the canal of Schlem which drains the aqueous humor from the anterior chamber so these are the things you should remember regarding the cornea the structure of the cornea the cornea is composed of five layers that you have to remember somehow because it's very important it's a repeated question so the cornea is consisting of five layers and these five layers are the outer one that is the corneal epithelium which is stratified squamous epithelium stratified means layered up so the corneal epithelium is the outermost layer then comes the Bowman's membrane or anterior elastic lamina then the substantia propria the decimates membrane or the posterior elastic lamina and finally the endothelium or the symbol squamous mesothelium so these are the five layers so starting from the corneal epithelium Bowman's membrane substantia propria the decimates membrane and the endothelium so you can make up some mnemonics out of the first letters of these names and it is a very important part so you have to memorize it so once again I'll repeat five layers the corneal epithelium Bowman's membrane substantia propria decimates membrane and the endothelium so this concludes the part one of eyeball anatomy where we have described through both the sclera and the cornea. Thank you.